To go straight across the Tarn Valley from one plateau to the other was something people always dreamt of. Then one day on the heights above Mio, a team of men and women started making that dream come true. If you want to go high, you'd better start by digging deep. If you want to go far, you'd better put down solid bearing plates. And if you want solid bearing plates, you can't afford to skimp on reinforcement or concrete. Soon after days and nights of hard work, the first pier begins to rise, and already with a little imagination, we can see the viaduct stretching away to the horizon. But first, there are seven colossal piers to build, seven work sites to be conducted, each with its own schedule, but all with the same ultra-rapid manufacturing cycle. Installing the reinforcing cage, lifting four meters, putting in the formwork and pouring the concrete takes just three days. On the fourth day, the sequence begins all over again. At this rate, the piers rise quickly. The highest shafts reach the height where they open out. Meanwhile, preparations are being made up on the Larzac Plateau. Miles away from Mio, at Lauterberg, the roadway profile plates are being mass-produced. A factory building has been converted and equipped with cutting-edge automated machines, and operators have been specially trained for this exceptional job. Some of the components are transported to the Eiffel plant at Foss, where the 152 central caissons which form the backbone of the bridge deck are manufactured. At Foss, as at Lauterburg, each element is very strictly controlled before being delivered to Mio. These caissons may be 17 meters long and 4.2 meters wide and high, but as always with bridges, everything is to the nearest millimeter. Once on the Cause du Larzac, no need to go any further. It's time to get in line. Dead in line with the abutment, if you please. Here again, to the nearest millimeter. Assembled, adjusted, welded. Lateral panels and central caissons form a huge convoy, a long train, ready for the off. It was so cold early in 2003, the welding teams heated the steel plates to ensure optimum welding quality. The worksite struggles to keep warm, but the stay cables are fatigue resistant. Subjected to two million cycles in the Laboratoire Central des Ponts et Chaussées, they don't break. Positive results also at the CSTB, the Scientific and Technical Center for the Construction Industry, where wind resistant studies are performed. On the Coast du Larzac, the route is now traced out. Everyone knows what they have to do, the deck and the men. The tip of the deck is about to be launched. Go. They're off. Millimeter after millimeter at a rate of nine meters per hour, the deck moves forward. It's March the 26th, 2003. The first push goes according to plan. It's 2,460 meters from the Coast du Larzac to the Coast Rouge. Cheer up, only 2,346 left to go. Sightseers think nothing of coming from miles around to admire the future viaduct. Tourists by the thousand, all sorts of celebrities and officials. When you weigh it all up, the viaduct, how can I put it? Well, it's up there that it all happens, right up there. Everyone can interpret things in their own way, of course. More this way, more that way, or exactly, exactly this way. After that, it depends how you feel. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Lean this way or that. What counts is that everyone can say in a nutshell what an extraordinary viaduct it is. 
Seriously though, time to get back to work. For example, temporary piles have to be built. By the way, the world record for the highest of these is 172 meters. Higher and higher. Cable towers have to be built too, weighing nearly 700 metric tons. And then stay cables have to be fixed way up there to hold up the deck as it moves forward. At the same time, let's not forget the piers. How could we? Especially pier number two, the highest of them all. As the deck continues to advance, the piers go on rising, and the P2 climbs to a very dizzy height indeed. On June the 12th, 2003, it reached 183 meters, breaking the world record. Records are made to be broken. Before it's finished, inch by inch, the P2 will break this one at least 15 times. On the Cause du Larzac, the deck continues to be assembled. It just wants pushing, so it gets pushed. About 48 hours to cover 171 meters. During this time, the deck on the Cause Rouge to the north of the viaduct is in the starting blocks. The P2 reaches a height of 245 meters, a new world record which is not about to be challenged. And then the P3 in turn gets to the top. The civil engineering part is nearly complete. Final concrete, final float. The names of the 537 people who built the viaduct's seven piers will be preserved forever, sealed in the top of pier number three. It could be a dream, but this is real. What they're doing here is pushing back the frontiers of possibility. Guided by high technology, a viaduct reaches for the sky. As if by magnetism, the two ends of the deck are irresistibly drawn towards each other. They're so determined to come together, they ignore gravity. They float on a sea of cloud. They have an appointment 268 meters above the tarn. Certain to reach their destination, two prodigious vessels sail through the air, all stays to the wind. Mind you, they've got some weight behind them. 171 meters at a time, thousands of tons of steel head towards each other. Day and night, for the crew, this is anything but routine. The initial rhythm, one push every six weeks, has been speeded up. From now on, it's one push per month. From pier to pile, that moment of meeting approaches. There were 2,460 meters to cover. 2,289 have been. Keep up the good work. The Coast du Larzac and the Coast Rouge are now only 171 meters apart. The North is the first to get there. One final push, the 18th, and the South comes snuggling in. They face each other, nose to nose, sizing each other up. Are they going to take that last step? Yes, by all appearances, they were made for each other. At 12 minutes past 2 p.m. on the 28th of May 2004, the Coast du Larzac and the Coast Rouge are officially declared to be joined together by a bond of 38,000 tons of steel, adjusted to the nearest millimeter. The French Prime Minister praises a project combining ambition and safety. All the family gather round, overjoyed. Their child is a giant. Now it's for life. The parents of the happy couple are delighted. With the French flag flying high above, this is a very happy moment for the Mio viaduct, and there's a memorable night of festivities to come. Is there still something missing? Let's see, what could it be? Legs? A trunk? A cap? It's the cable towers, of course. They were built and assembled long before the keying took place. 
As proud as could be on their 60 wheels, these cable towers are just about the first users to go across the viaduct. They're guided with all due care and attention to their assigned places. At dawn, another maneuver begins. The men and machines are standing by on the deck. It's not every day we get to see aerobatics performed by an acrobat about 90 meters tall and weighing around 700 tons. Flexibility, technique, precision, an impressive performance. Everything's okay. Bracing the stay cables already started on the P2 and P3 towers can now be completed. It's as neat as a piece of embroidery, hand sewn at that. A shuttle moves to and fro, pulling the threads. Strand after strand, the stay is braided. The system guarantees that each of these strands is subjected equally to the exact stress determined by the design engineers. In 12 weeks, not one more, the bracing is completed. All the stays are installed. Monitored electronically from now on, they give the Mio viaduct its final... Meanwhile, the toll station is being built. In profile here is the prospect of the future operation of the viaduct. If the road left to cover is not too long, it's because it's been through the group's laboratories. Putting a roadway of this kind on a steel flooring was not simple, but after a good two years of research, after testing no less than 12 modified asphalts, after carrying out full-scale trials, they came up with the magic formula. And off we go. First operation, protective sealing, beginning with shot blasting to scour the metal clean. Immediately afterwards, so as not to give rust a chance to move in, a primary bonding layer is put on. Then it's time to lay and weld the final insulating sheet. 65,000 square meters to cover. In less than seven weeks, it's done, and it's faultless. For its part, the hot mix is coming to the boil. Fresh from the mixing plant, it can't wait to get on the road. And there it goes, 10,000 tons of asphalt surfacing, ready to bring future users the only qualities they're interested in, safety and comfort. From that point of view, nothing has been neglected. No sooner is the surface dry than a low wall of concrete starts running right down the middle of the viaduct. Meanwhile, plexiglass guardrails slip along the sides as if they're going to overtake it. It's absolutely physically necessary to install the expansion joints. Depending on the temperature differences, the length of the bridge deck can vary by one meter each end. As for the electricians, they have been working, as it were, in the shadows since day one. Cable after cable, connection after connection, they threaded their way into the piers and rows within them. Cable after cable, connection after connection, they slipped into the deck even before it began to be pushed forward. Now, in contact with all the signs and markings, they converge on the toll barrier. The heart of the system is there, connected to the viaduct by fiber optics to monitor the safety of users at all times. The viaduct's apparent lightness is deceptive. When it comes to carrying capacity, it's in the jumbo class. One, two, three, ten lorries. Go ahead, you can put 30 lorries on it with a combined weight of 900 tons, close together on a single span. Create a situation such as you're never likely to see in normal traffic conditions and the viaduct won't budge. Firmly ensconced on its piers, its stay cables taut and firm, this colossus sails through the statutory conformity test. The Effage Group financed the viaduct from Equity Capital. The CEVM, the Compagnie Effage du Viaduc de Millau, the concession holder and contracting authority, orchestrated the work in consultation with leading international experts. Effage Construction performed the earthworks and the concrete component. Eiffel built and assembled the steel component. Forklon carried out the electrical installation. 
Apia performed the road surfacing. The whole Effage group joined forces for this world record-breaking viaduct. Let's take a moment to consider the time frame. On the 14th of December 2001, Mr. Jean-Claude Guesso, the Minister of Transport and Housing, laid the first stone. On the 14th of December 2004, Mr. Jacques Chirac, President of the Republic, inaugurated the Mio Viaduct. It took just three years to build this giant. A few hours were enough for it to become a source of national pride, a symbol of achievement and efficiency, an example of French success and excellence. There's magic in the air.